Star Wars Outlaws was announced by Ubisoft nearly a year ago, and there's been a lot of new information released about the game since then, officially and unofficially, including rumors and leaks. So by the end of this video, you'll be fully up to speed on what this game is all about, and it's looking pretty promising so far. But let's first start with the release date. When is it actually coming out? Well, I reckon we'll be seeing this launch in the next six months if there is no official delay, as Ubisoft officially stated in their Q3 financial call recently that they will be launching a large game in the financial year of 2024 to 2025, which runs from April to April, with industry insider Tom Henderson recently publishing an article stating that internally Ubisoft are planning to release this game in the first half of this year, so before the month of June, and specifically targeting a May release in time for May the 4th annual Star Wars celebrations to generate further hype for the game. Disney also recently published an article, which has now since been amended, that stated that this game would be releasing late this year, which threw a spanner in the works with what Ubisoft told its shareholders. And because of that, Ubisoft then subsequently reached out to IGN to inform them that this was incorrect, which adds further legitimacy to this May release rumor or leak from Tom Henderson. Now, Ubisoft likes to release their games on Thursdays. Assassin's Creed Mirage and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora both coming out on that day of the week most recently, which leaves us with a likely date of either Thursday the 2nd of May, just before the May the 4th of event or more likely in my opinion Thursday the 9th of May a week after the celebrations so provisionally pencil that date in pending any delayed announcements I would say now as for storyline and current gen info we've got some new stuff to discuss here first of all so we're all on the same page this game will be releasing on PS5 Xbox Series X and S and PC through Ubisoft Connect so it will not be available on Steam upon launch secondly Julian Gerighty the creative director recently said to IGN that this game is absolutely not a 200 or 300 hour epic unfinishable RPG. It is very dense, very focused and is very manageable, which is chef's kiss music to my ears after playing AC Valhalla for over 400 hours. And before I forget, it is a single player game, by the way, no multiplayer or co-op will be featured here in Outlaws. Thirdly, the narrative director, Navid Kavari, recently confirmed to Game Informer that Outlaws will only have one ending due to its narrative constraints, which will slightly vary upon your own reputation level with various syndicates and factions. And don't worry, we will get to that a little later. And fourthly, the story takes place between the Empire Strikes Back and the return of the Jedi. So it's in the middle of a civil war between the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. But this game isn't about either of them, but rather about Kavas navigating her way through the criminal underworld, which is at its peak operational level at this moment in time in the galaxy. Now, this all sounds very promising, and that's a good segue onto exploration planets and map size now because Julian went on to tell Famitsu, the Japanese gaming website recently, that each planet has specifically been designed with a gameplay experience in mind, with all planets having been selected based on each crime syndicate's influence upon them and more on syndicates specifically a little later because unlike Starfield, each planet has been handcrafted and is not procedurally generated, which I think is a big positive from this kind of dense single player game. Speaking of which, Julian confirmed that there aren't planets created for just side content. In fact, there will be a reason in the story why we need to travel there, similar in that aspect to Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor, which means no bloated side content and fetch quests on randomly AI generated planets, which is again, quite encouraging to hear, to be honest with you. Additionally, Julian, the creative director, also said to Famitsu that the moon of Tashara, as an example of map size, was crafted alongside Lucasfilm and is approximately equivalent to two or three map zones in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, not the full map. So expect around a two to three kilometer squared in map size for each planet, which is about the size of three Athen zones, as an example, referencing Odyssey there, and not the whole of England recreated in Outlaws here in that one map approach, which comes in at around 120 kilometers, by the way, which is massive, and some may say, quite bloated indeed. Now, if you are enjoying this breakdown so far, please do leave a very swift like down below. I genuinely really appreciate it. And if you do end up giving this game a go, please do consider or remember to use the Andy Reloads credit code at Ubisoft's checkout because you will get one penny or one cent off your purchase, which is absolutely outstanding. But jokes aside, I genuinely really appreciate your support. So thanks very much. And I'll uh, pop a link in the pinned comments. Now, one of the most appealing features to me in this game is the ability to ride our speeder, which as confirmed by Julian, 
Geraity at Comic-Con has been inspired and designed around a Swedish motocross bike where we'll be able to do tricks out in the world when exploring. And it also comes equipped with a auto piloting system similar to the follow road mechanic actually in Assassin's Creed Valhalla where you can kind of go AFK while your horse auto follows the road. And if you get off it somewhere, you can then summon this bike back to you remotely at any time. Julian also mentioned that they've included Luke Skywalker's Speeder as a hot rod inspiration design where we can travel across the whole of Tatooine, getting involved in high speed chases and also engaging in combat whilst on our bike or speeder, which as you can see here, seems to be inspired by the Red Dead Dead Eye ultimate move in that game where we can press down both of our joysticks to then one shot enemies with Julian confirming to Famitsu that this is just one of the abilities Kay will have on her vehicle so I would say expect quite a lot more here. Now I'm hoping there may be pod racing or speeder races of some kind in this game as I still actually play uh, pod racer on my Switch to this day so I'd love something similar here in Outlaws so fingers crossed if it's not a launch I really do hope it's kind of added in the future. Now let's talk about this wanted system because it's been designed to work alongside the reputation system as confirmed by Julian again. He's been on a rampage in interviews recently and how this works is that you can accept small missions, contracts and side quests from certain factions to increase your favor and reputation with them and by doing so you'll then unlock exclusive quests with that faction, special discounts at vendors and access to locked off areas. But if you are then seen to be be killing or assassinating syndicate members or disrupting their illegal trade by working for a competing faction as you can see here as an example as our reputation with the pikes reduces after trashing their facility you will then become wanted by them if you then continue to cause them issues where they will then send their own bounty hunters after you and attack you on site now Navid Kavari the narrative director confirmed that the main story will account for your current reputation with those factions and syndicates and will then be reflected positively or negatively in dialogue options with those syndicates respectively. On top of all of this, if you continue to conduct yourself in an outlawish manner, the Empire will also put a bounty on you, which is way more negatively impactful in game than just syndicate bounty hunters because of the Empire's resources. But the good news here being that you can actively de-escalate or reduce your wanted level in game. And let's talk about that now, because one of the best ways we can avoid issues with the Empire or syndicates or make amends with them is through bribing, which we can see in action from the gameplay teaser revealed last year. As confirmed by Julian again, in a Edge magazine article actually back in September, you you can actually buy yourself to safety in certain situations for a period of time or reduce your notoriety with factions by paying them off essentially and the team haven't confirmed yet what the max wanted level is in the game amongst the syndicates or the empire itself but if we do reach that level we can reduce it back down to zero by completing these side quest missions or just spending a ton of credits to bribe absolutely everyone we see <laughs> similar to another ubisoft mechanic in assassin's creed where you can rip down wanted posters off the walls to reduce your notoriety most recently in assassin's creed mirage so expect something similar here in out Laws. Now, as for the syndicates themselves, we don't yet have a full list of all of the clans available or syndicates in this game, but we do have the Ashiga clan officially confirmed so far, which has been a newly created clan alongside Lucasfilm with their members' traits focused on respecting honor, tradition, and history, as well as the huts also being confirmed where we will be able to betray Jabba the Hutt directly if we want to, and of course, the pikes who are spice traffickers and dominate that section of trade in the underworld at that time in the galaxy. Now, before we tuck into combat details, I want to show you how I play all my Star Wars and open world games after a long day at work. And that's thanks to Ben Q, who sent me this awesome X500i gaming projector. And not only was it super easy to set up by literally just plugging it in to a power source and into my PS5, but you don't need to be 25 meters away from it to actually get the projector into focus, which is wonderful because I'm actually sat 1.5 meters away here and I'm getting 120 FPS at 4K quality with 100 inch screen which has actually blown my mind on how good projectors have come in the last few years speaking of which this projector has also changed my experience when it comes to watching the gold standard of cinema that being the prequels of course Hello there. Because even though this X500i has been designed for gaming, it has Android TV built into it. So it's like you're bringing the cinema experience home with you without having to pay the insane popcorn prices. You are strong and wise, Anakin, and I am very proud of you. 
It's also got this cool bit of software built into it called Settings Exchange, which allows you to download pre-made expert projector settings to experience the game the way we pro gamers like to enjoy it. And you can also share your own settings profile online with everyone else to use, which I'm looking forward to doing when Outlaws releases. It works on Xbox, PlayStation, and even your Switch, by the way, where it instantly recalls and loads your previous game settings. So you don't need to mess around with it in the menus every time you do Switch games. So very much worth the investment, in my opinion, after spending a lot of time with it over the last few weeks. I'll pop a link below the like button down below, and cheers to BenQ for supporting the channel. Now, when it comes to combat, our primary weapon will be our blaster, with Mathis Carlson, the game director, going on to say that as we progress throughout the game, the blaster will evolve and improve, becoming a very versatile tool for more than just killing enemies at range, such as changing the ammunition to explosive bullets, which could then be effective against enemies with shields at close quarters. We also see an example of this playing out in that gameplay teaser from last year, where we see Kay change her blaster to a focus mode by holding down the LB button for more damage thanks to a weapon upgrade, or we can look into improving the cooldown capacity of our weapon, which as you can see here, again, if we don't do that, it will then overheat if we end up spamming the trigger too much. Very similar to a Star Wars Battlefront 2 gameplay mechanic if you've played that game. And I'm expecting a mix of Star Wars and Jedi Survivor here with the blaster combat if you've actually played either of those games either. And I would love to see more info on close quarters weapons and other rifles in the next showcase if we do get one before launch. But what about spaceship combat and traveling back and forth between planets. Well, first of all, we won't be able to freely travel from the surface to space. That will actually be a cutscene or transitioning game. But as Julian said in that same Edge magazine interview recently, it will be seamless. And from looking at that initial cutscene from last year, it does look a lot better than Starfield's loading screens. And perhaps we'll see a No Man's Sky transition in this game in the future. Now, as for when we reach near orbit of a planet or moon, we do get some initial freedom to explore the space around that location where Julian says that we'll be able to trade, smuggle and fire against pirates as well as the Empire in this area, which brings us nicely onto combat in space because the Trailblazer ship is equipped with missiles, lasers, a nitrous speed boost, and a hyperdrive, which we will use to travel between planets. The caveat being, it does take a little bit of time to warm up before you can use it, so you can potentially be killed or stopped if you do start charging it whilst under fire during combat. But there's also a camera chase control feature, according to Julian, where you can chase down a enemy in your ship automatically and just control the shooting and weapon weaponry on your spaceship so it's a lot easier for you to play in a dogfight if you do want that option in game. Now, what about customization in this game? Can you actually create your own character? Well, I'm afraid the answer is no, just to be straight with you, as this is a single player RPG open world game and Kay Vass is the main protagonist and we can outfit her just like we can customize Cal in Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor. Now, according to Navid, we'll be able to customize her outfits, her spaceship speeder and blaster pistol. And even though it hasn't yet been confirmed, I imagine hairstyles and helmets will be included here as as well. Now, as we don't know the full extent of upgrading here in the game at the moment, the team have confirmed that we can improve upon our speeder and spaceship. So expect a bit of gameplay variety here, depending upon how you like to fly. And going on Ubisoft's track record for a cosmetic store and microtransactions in their games, I'd also say expect a full store of cosmetics on launch and of course as pre-order bonuses. Now, MTX aside, one thing I think Ubisoft does really well in its game development is how it integrates real world history inside its games and also teaches you about certain cultures, daily life and stories verified by historians in that time period. Now, of course, Star Wars is a fictional universe, but the team is still planning on incorporating a kind of Star Wars discovery tour all but in name, just like they've done with previous games, which they describe as virtual tourism inside a Star Wars universe, with Julian mentioning on the official Star Wars website that we'll be able to experience the moisture farms on Mos Eisley to then seeing cantinas being constructed across the world with the team following the rule set by Lucasfilm that 80% of the planets have environments that are familiar to Earth that are real life inspired 
while the other 20% is fantastical and alien. Now, Navid Kavari, the narrative director, followed up on this quite nicely in an interview with Kotaku, where he said there will be three different types of experience in Outlaws. The first is dense cities with syndicates and corrupt imperials all over the shop. The second is the vast, mysterious open world environments. And the third is space, where we can explore around each planet. So there's a lot of possibilities so far here from what we've been told. And of course, it's always good to keep your expectations managed until we see more gameplay and features for ourselves and if you do want to know more about this game make sure you do subscribe if you haven't already done so as i'll be covering the game from start to finish with updates tips and tricks and hopefully some interviews as i recently spoke to the avatar developers who are also from massive studios when ubisoft invited me to sweden ahead of that game's launch i also may have another outlaws video for you on your screen right now so give that a click and big thanks to nika for helping me make this video for you i think cantina drinks are definitely on her and I'll see you in that next video in just a second.